Um, welcome to my new studio here in Scotland. Uh, it's a little bit different to my Norwegian setup, but um, here we go. I thought I'd make a video on how to overcome artist's block or uh, white canvas syndrome, I think it can be called sometimes. So the reason for that is social media at the moment, I'm seeing lots of little posts saying I've lost my motivation and inspiration and all the rest of it, which is fair enough. And um, I think a little bit of that is coming my way because I've sort of had about two and a half months where I've really done very little, probably one little charity painting for uh, the Prince's Trust. What is it? Um, it's a funny thing. It's something that's in your head. You're intimidated by that white sheet of paper. You've got self-doubt, imposter syndrome, stuff like that going through your head. And that might be from various reasons. You might just have some paintings that have failed or paintings that you thought were good that other people thought were failures. You may have just been away from your easel for such a long time and you don't think you can get back into it. There could be all sorts of reasons for it and I've had a good think about it today and I've come up with a five step plan I think will help you overcome artists block. Step one is be realistic and there are, there are a few ways to do that. What I personally look at is where am I? Remember you're just a person that likes painting, you're not a bad person, you're not you know you're not doing anything wrong, you've just taken a break so forgive yourself just let yourself understand that you've taken a break. The reasons for taking that break are just totally your business. And you've been a painter in the past, you're still a painter. Unless you're one of these people that, you know, so this sounds harsh, okay, but I, I don't play the saxophone. And, um, and I, I could have saxophone player's syndrome. But you know what? I don't really mind that because I've looked at playing the saxophone a very long time ago and uh, yeah, I just it's not me. I just don't want to do it, but I am a painter. I will always be a painter. Unless you're a person that's given it a go and really at the back of your mind you know it's not for you and that is totally fair enough. I don't have any issues with that kind of thing because, you know, let's face it, you're being honest with yourself and you're making a call. And I'm not kidding yourself. And I've got to say that, you know, I admire that um, honesty. But, you know, if, be realistic with yourself. Step one, be real. Are you a painter or an artist? Deep down, is that what you want? And if the answer is yes, then you had a break and you're just going to forgive yourself and you're going to carry on with what you're doing. Step number two, you've just got to assess where you are with yourself as a painter. Have a little look at, and don't get too bogged down with, but be honest and refresh your memory with your last painting work. What went wrong with it? If something went wrong with it, what can you do to overcome that? Is that within your capabilities? So, you know, you, you might decide that, yeah, some of my paintings were um, um, not up to, what I wanted and that was because I painted indoors and the lighting was bad and I'm going to have a look at going outdoors. Well if you can't go outdoors and paint you're going to fail because you can't do the thing that you've decided you need to do to fix it. So assess where you are with your work. What's your standard? Is the standard you want to be attainable? And that is really simply it. Just assess. But look at it this way. You were a painter once there is really no reason why you can't be a painter again. It's in you. It's in your sort of DNA, your fabric. You've, you've been there. So you're just engineering your path to return to that style of painting. Step number three, and this is probably the important one, is commit. Commit, commit. No one will give you a fantastic little push that gets you going. And, you know, I don't mean to sound mean. But when people write things on Facebook and wherever, oh, I just can't paint. Well, you know, what are you looking for by saying that? I mean, you, 
You want to collect a whole bunch of other people and go, yeah, me neither, I can't paint, I'm really down. No, surrounding yourself with this is a no for me. And, and I think if you know someone that is, that is there with you too, and they're saying, you know what, I am determined this week I will paint a painting. You could then join forces and go, you know what, well, I'm with you. But if it's, if it's just this whole, yeah, I feel your pain stuff, you're just going to spiral round and round and round and you won't remove yourself from that negative level. You, the way to do this now is to commit. And there are several ways to do it. A combination of several things that I think you should do. First of all, chronologically plan, right? So like I just said, it might be I will paint one painting by the end of this week. Or you might decide in six months time, I will have a painting in a competition or a, I will have three paintings in an exhibition with my local art group. You've got to set yourself a task and you've got to set yourself a time frame to do it in because if you just go one of these days I'll paint, yeah, whenever, when's that gonna be? So you have to paint and you have to paint when you say you're gonna paint. So you need to commit in terms of dates and time. Remember why you paint, you know, you're not putting off um, a hot iron branding on your butt cheek, you're just putting off a very pleasant experience that you've loved up till now. And, you know, as the second that you start a painting, you are no longer in that artist's block. As soon as you put a blob of paint on a canvas, on a sheet of beautiful paper, you've overcome it. Look at your failed canvases. Take them out of the corner of shame and just paint a layer of burnt umber over them. Um, you know, and if you have nice expensive watercolor paper, flip it over, line the edges with masking tape, ready to go. What we're looking to do is, with this commitment, is to um, just mix some paint on a palette. And it can be watercolor, it can be oil, it can be acrylic, whatever you use. And then do little things like doodle. Just look at a piece of paper or canvas and go, do you know what? I can always wipe this canvas clean. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna allow this. You know, take away the pressure, take away the potential for guilt because you haven't produced a masterpiece on that nice big expensive canvas or sheet of paper. You can fix that. Get in a sketchbook and mix some little water, some little color swatches. You know, because you're going through the mechanics of mixing paint, feeling it on a brush feeling that brush against the surface, you are no longer in an artist's block because you're painting. Who said it's about what you're painting? It's about painting. And I very much value making sketches and uh, color swatches and experimentation. I very much value those um, as part of the ingredients that you need to make a painting. Another little thing that I think can be overwhelming, if you look behind me, this is some of my stuff. That little collection of stuff can intimidate you. You can also get distracted by this stuff and go, do you know, I'll try that. And you've never tried it before and it's never worked for you before, but somehow because you're struggling and you're clutching at straws, you'll try stuff. So here's another little part of commitment. When you're deciding on working, gather around a little shoe box full of the stuff that you tend, you're intending to use and only use that. I mean, fair enough, if you've forgotten your, your Gamsol or Terps or whatever, you're gonna need that, so you can go back. But you know, limited palette, handful, small handful of brushes, uh, that's all you need. Don't go looking at this huge racking of artist equipment that you used to use. Stop circling around and, and wallowing on Facebook saying, oh. make a date that you commit. I can't stress that enough. By Friday, I'm going to paint um, a Norwegian scene because I'm kind of in love with Norway. There you go. I've put it on in video and so I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to do it. And that's what this is. Stop talking about it and do it. We, we can wallow all we like, but wallowing won't get you painting again. It will maybe find you other wallowers. No. Paint. Get on with it. Get your stuff. Limited amount. Paint. Make a date to paint. You're going to produce paintings when by. And you're going to show them to who, when, commit. Step number four is understand. Simply put, understand 
that you have to do some work here. Again, it's getting away from this talking about it and it's heading towards the doing it bit. It's work. You've also got to understand that you know, say it wasn't, we weren't talking about painting, say this was talking about snooker, <laughs> right? So say, oh and no, I've just pulled that out of my head. But if you don't practice snooker, and then you rock up for a tournament and you think you're gonna win, your chances are, if you've had six months off, you might not really crack it. And you need to go back to the drawing board and practice. Well, you know, painting is very much like that. People say to me all the time, and I'm sure, You've had the same thing. Oh, I wish I could paint. Well, when do you try? And if you have a couple of months off, you sort of maybe lost a little bit. Maybe, and I'm hoping that you don't. I'm hoping you, you've you lost hardly anything, if anything at all. And all you need to do is blow some cobwebs off and paint again. The chances are you may well have lost a little bit of your technique and you need to just switch that on and use those muscles again. And so you need to understand it's work. You need to get back into your practice. You need to put hours back into it. Release yourself from the pressure. We put ourselves under this pressure and I, and I think it's healthy in many ways that um, it matters because if you've got zero pressure, then it's like I'm, I'm under zero pressure to play saxophone and that's because with all due respect to saxophonists, that's because it doesn't matter to me. But painting does matter, so there's a little bit of skin in the game. So it should have a bit of pressure, but not so much pressure that it overcomes you. So look at keeping the balance of pressure right. Don't expect every painting to be a masterpiece. And again, you know, stick it in the corner of shame for a while, take it out and look at it. Maybe you'll be happy with it. Maybe you just know what you need to add to it. Or maybe what you need to add to it is a wash of burnt umber and uh, let that dry and start again. The best artists throughout history, when, when their work is um, x-rayed, there are totally different paintings underneath. Failing doesn't mean you're not a painter. <laughs> it really doesn't. You are a painter. The fact that you're probably watching this video means you're a painter and it matters to you. And that's pretty much the basic ingredient. Remove the pressure from the situation but just keep a little trickle of it so that it, this matters. Stage number five is evaluate. It calls for a lot of honesty and, and I'm not talking about getting uh, um, honesty from other people here. You can do that if you like, but you know if you're happy with the painting. And there are paintings that I'm personally really pleased with and I'm showing them to my wife and my wife has said, burn it or the other way around. And my wife is a painter too, and she's very, very good. But sometimes she'll go to me, stop, leave it there. That is just right. And I've got plans to go and take that painting a whole stage further than that. So be wary of what other people say about your work, because the direction they would go with that canvas isn't necessarily where your style and ability would take you. So when I say evaluate, and I'm saying be really honest, I'm saying with yourself, about your work. Where are you in terms of when you made that decision to commit in step three? Where are you now? Okay, so if it is Thursday night and I said I'd paint a painting by Friday and I've done nothing, I'm in a little bit of trouble. So look at where you are. If you've done a nice blocking in and a line diagram and all you've got to do is highlights, well, you're on track and that's brilliant. But if you, if it's, if you said you'd do a painting by Friday, it's Thursday night, then what you should do instead of running away and starting to wallow again is look at what you need to do. Right, well, I need to get myself up in the morning, take a dog for a walk, get a coffee and sit down and get something done here. And, you know, it might have to change. So it might just have to be a very loose sketched image rather than that lovely big masterpiece that you predicted you'd create. And, and that is part and parcel of this whole process because it leads you back to the being realistic point, which is point number one, okay? So where your expectations actually on the nose? Um, if you're distracted and you're not that into it, then and it doesn't matter to you. So you're not likely to achieve the results. What I'd say is evaluate openly, honestly, look at where you are. Are you getting where you said you'd go? And if you're not, go figure out how. On the way, don't go down the wallowing route. 
and put a note on Facebook. Oh, I can't paint. I've lost my mojo. I've lost my inspiration. I, I'm not totally unsympathetic to that. Just on a separate note, I'm not totally uns unsympathetic to that losing inspiration, losing mojo thing. Uh, and I, I, do you know, I actually think quite a lot of that boils down to um, you just haven't got a subject that lights your fire. If somebody said to me, paint this elephant, and there are ele <laughs> painters of wildlife out there are hugely successful and talented, um, and I, I am nothing against elephants, don't get me wrong, but painting an elephant is, is not something that I aspire to do. And so if that's my subject that I've got to paint a painting of by Friday, I'm gonna to struggle to do it. But you know, I, I've just moved to this place in Scotland, Aberdeen, and I take my dog out and I go for a ride on my bike and I'm seeing these fantastic stone buildings with slate roofs and people say it's grey but if you look in at the grey I'm just fascinated by the pinks, the violets, the browns in there, the, all the neutral colours, how they change when they're wet, um, how they contrast with the sky, with the roofs, with uh, you know uh, foliage around them and I'm itching to go you know so um, is one of these reasons that your subject's just too bloody boring you know so give yourself a give yourself a painting that you know sometimes when I when I scroll through some photo references you know there, there's some lovely photos but I'm thinking you know I could recreate that to the best standard I could possibly expect and the image itself would be quite boring. So think about your composition again. Go back to these basics. Do you remember when I said it's like you've got to learn your trade again because you've been off the spanners for a while? You know, you do. And that's one of the things, thinking about composition. You know, do you have to paint what exactly is in front of you or in your, in your photo? Can you edit it to comply with things like, you know, not always the answer, but you know the rule of thirds. Can you bring find little ways like uh, of paths and tree lines and things like that that bring your eye into you know the uh, point of interest? Um, edit it. Edit your view. Uh, if you if you keep on painting something that bores you and doesn't make your heart skip a little beat, which sounds a bit over the top, but you know then. Failure is an option, so pick a great subject, pick something that you like that image, and and, he, and you know, even if it's got loads of cars in it or people and stacks of windows and it's freaking you out, have a crack at that, because you don't, you're not looking to make a photographic image, you're just looking to make some marks on a canvas or a, um, a sheet of paper that um, capture the atmosphere of, of what you're looking at. Okay, well, um, I really hope that the five-step plan that I've come up with, um, imperfect as it probably is, um, is some help to you. And, um, you know, likes and subscribes are great. And please feel free to do that. Uh, I'd be much happier, though, with uh, helping one person get over this um, horrible thing and uh, this big cloud over you that we call um, artist block. So I'm going to quickly whiz through the five steps. So the first one is um, be real. Are you a painter? If you're not and you're dabbling and it's time to say goodbye to it, fine. That's, you know, you're not a bad person. So be real. Okay, number two is assess Assess where you are. What do you need to do um, to get yourself back in the game? And that might involve looking at some old work, um, look, asking honest questions about what went wrong, um, or, or um, looking at some of your good work and thinking about, um, right, what I liked about that was, and, and getting back into that uh, um, connection. For me, Number three is the most important one, and if you don't take anything else away from this, um, maybe number three is the one, commit. 
okay? Um, you have to say, I'm drawing a line in the sand. This is it now, I'm back. I'm going for it again. And, um, and you have to do that by, uh, you have to stop the wallowing and um, thinking phase, um, the, the contemplation phase, and get into the action. And that involves putting a brush with some paint on it onto a surface, and that is really it. It doesn't really matter at this stage what you're painting, you know. You're not looking for masterpieces. You, you, a colour swatch will do, um, a doodle will do at this stage. You know, obviously you'll go on and you'll want a decent composition. The first thing in breaking this negative behavioural trait that you're involved in is blob of paint on paper or canvas. That's all it is, commit. Now that leads into number four, and number four is all about understanding. So, you know, art isn't something that happens by luck. Painters just don't paint by luck. I, people might prove that wrong and fine. But for me right now, um, no, you don't get it for nothing. So you have to do your gym work like athletes do, you know, and you have to do your scales like a musician does. That is simply it. You know, and if you have a break, you have to rehone those skills a little bit. Great if you don't, and it's just a case of getting back to where you left off. But I definitely know after two and a half months or so, there were colours that I was thinking, how the hell did I mix that when I was out sketching for this video the other day? So, yes, understand it is totally hard work, and also that you have to do it. There is nobody that's going to take the burden from you. You have to do it. And probably I should chuck in there that it's fun. Remember why you're a painter. You're a painter because it's a pleasant thing. And, um, you know, you've had a break. You're not a criminal. You're just getting back into it. That's all this is. But, you know, it's important to go into number five, which is evaluate. You know, when you hit that point where you should have had a painting done, um, it's time's moving on and you're not there. Look at why. Are you there? Is the painting the standard you wanted it to be? If not, why not? Um, what can you do? And you may end up stepping back into stage one where you think, let's be real, am I a painter? How, how, am I done? It's reality. Not everybody that tries painting stays a painter. <laughs> I hope you stay. <laughs> I hope you stay with it. Oh, God. I don't want to sound negative. I hope you stay with it and I hope you get a fraction of the joy out of painting that, that I personally get. But you know, I can't, I, I can't kind of put your arm up your back and force you to do it and enjoy it. That's all down to you. So evaluate, are you there? Are you happy with it? Are you content that you're back? Thank you for watching this video. Um, I've actually really enjoyed making it because it, it's a bit of a personal thing for me because I've had a bit of time off um, because I've moved house and uh, not just house but country and it's been tough you know and um, I haven't really done an awful lot because I've just been massively busy and you know life gets in the way doesn't it <laughs> you know so forgive yourself and just get back into it that's honestly that's it and um, good luck please leave a comment uh, if you can hear any little footsteps, that's my dog. I think she's going to jump up now. Uh, he, she has to get involved. Coming up. Yeah, okay. So she's here now. All right, so look. Get, get back in the game and enjoy it. Write me a comment and uh, I'll do my best to sort of get back to you. Okay? Thanks for watching.